Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Oswaldo Basbur. I'm the principal of Voice Digital LCC and consultant fellow for SIC Advanced Analytics. Today I'm going to introduce you with this uh, new concept of the hydrodynamic zero order flotation operational model. The agenda constitutes the seven steps. First of all, I'm going to present the problem that we have really in convolution, rotation, and water recovery, or process optimization of the mineral processing plant. Then we are going to go at the new advanced analytics infrastructure for dynamic decision support to improve the optimization, and the four steps which are required to maximize the rotation meta recovery. We are going to introduce the zero order in the dynamic rotation model, and we are going to look at the effect of this particle size distribution in rotation, and also on how the variable that profile uh, play a very, very important role uh. on how you need to run these banks in today's low grade ores. Then we're going to look briefly to the zero plant operational model, which when you get information uh, in the time domain, you can create the whole plant model for true optimization, and then do the result and continue. So the first thing is to present the big problem that we have. Usually we have the grinding rotation of the optimization, where we have the stockpile, the grinding, and the roughers, and they are not synchronized. So we need to be in the blue region, meaning that we are going to be outside the constraints that we have at the stockpile. In the grinding, the same thing. We are going to be outside the constraints so we can develop the model. Of course, we can push to the constraint, but with the guided predictive analytics. That's the big change that I want to introduce to you today. And the rapid recovery, of course, is very much affected by the grinding feed. That if it's too coarse, we are going to lose true liberation, and it's also going to impact on the water recovery, believe it or not, because the tubulars are not going to have the right size distribution. It's going to be difficult to populate. And mostly, also, the dark bottoms, which are always going to be plugged if you have very coarse material, because the flotation cells are not going to be able to mix that very coarse material. And then we find that if the dark bottom doesn't work, we have tremendous problems with flotation. And also the impellers get corroded, the pumps get corroded, and so the particle size distribution in grinding, in the distribution, uh, the amount of fines, the amount of coarse material, and the maximum amount of coarse material that we can handle in rotation, in thickening, are what I'm going to be talking about today. Let's talk. When you get the data from process control, we call it dark data. This is really going up and down, and you don't know the context about. So you need to give, you need to sort, you need to clean it, you need to context, you need to get the gross error detection, because you are going to be developing predictive models which require that you have a reasonable set of data to be able to develop the models. And also, you are going to be doing some of the catching of the downtimes, because you know immediately when something is going in the wrong direction, so you'll be able to predict and not have a shutdown. You're going to be able to, be able to stop the plan or do some corrective action before something happens. This is very, very well known for additional maintenance. Anything that was going wrong is going to tell you in advance, probably months in advance. And most of the time, these problems are not maintenance. They're process problems due to the variations on the hard harness, density, and the size distribution, especially coarse material going where it did not need to go. So once you get this information, which are data, events, or capsules, and we call them in the SIC language, we can aggregate and transform that into viable information to create insights, and not only that, create a predictive model to avoid going into the constraints. So the first step that we need to do to simplify the implementation is that we need to do the cookie channel approach, so we got the unit, and we apply that to all the chain supply in the mineral processing plant, so we can have a global set of variables that we can identify the hidden losses, aggregate according to the capsule or time frame, and visualize them in something that the manager can see where is the bottleneck that we got today, 
according to the type of war or whatever uh, type of disturbance that is very difficult to manage for the traditional capabilities of the plant. Once we get that and we got the upper and lower control limits of the system, we can model and predict very carefully and with a lot of knowledge because within the system uh, we have the real-time data cleans and ready to go for predicting what might be happening and we can predict the particle size distribution, we can predict the uh, recovery, we can predict anything, we can predict downtimes, we can predict anything these days with the tools that are becoming available that we call machine learning tools where we get the feature variable, we have the special variable using the model and the target prediction that we can calculate using this type of technology. And then we deploy them. And the idea is that the objective is to maximize the yield while reducing the operating cost. So let's start with the first step. The first step is to get your process flow diagram and use this top-down approach to get the homogenization unit, the grinding unit, the potation unit, and the picking unit, and coordinate this process in a way that we can know the energy losses, water losses, reagent losses, when the unit is not running right. And see if we can coordinate that. So the first thing that we do, we do have, let's say that you have pi, so this is really pi, and we are going to have this extra layer on top. We are going to calculate the recovery, estimate the losses of copper in the tailing, and see that our concentrate is maxed out, and we have the right rate. So this is the visualization of the digital thing for the concentrator model where we've got the water analysis, the power analysis, and we are seeing that this is being flushed correctly without touching any content. If you can see here, I put the flotation that we are doing something wrong with it. We don't know what it is, so we are going to find out. And that's what I wanted to see how we go through this. And sometimes when you get the flotation problem, it might be the thickening problem. But remember, the thickening is very important because there you want to get up to 80, 82 percent before we hold water. And you can do that if you have the proper material going into the thickening. And then you get your concentrate and you get everybody happy because here you can send uh, that to your uh, whatever you're going to have, whatever you're going to check it out. You get the smelter very happy recovering all the gold and all the precious metals that you need all the copper. So what we need is this new tool. This new tool goes on the cloud most of the time and uh, is a browser-based environment where we can calculate the first derivative, the second derivative, and has a tremendous amount of knowledge. You can predict everything with very simple tools. And usually when the parabola goes in the opposite direction, ha uh -huh, you got a problem there. So the system is, when anything tells you, when you start having, you start having some pain. And we know that as a human being. So sometimes we just ignore them, we don't listen, and they will crush the plant. And that can cost us a lot of money. So just by avoiding a few grand doubts or avoiding some um, problem with the coarse material that's going to clog your cycling, going to rope your cycling, and the most important that it's going to get the tar valve of working correctly is a and then you can see, and management can see what are the problems, what are the bottlenecks today, and you can go back, and you can predict, and then you can develop very sophisticated model by using Python in the Jupyter environment, connected directly to the data to develop this model that you can use to look at the opportunity that you have. This is showing you an example that is showing real data of the plant that has variations in pyrite, variations in density, and but you want to know what is the energy that we are wasting, what is the water that we need in the correctly, because we didn't respect the, the restriction or the capabilities of the plant. We are not there to treat this material. So we need to do something at the very beginning, if possible, to really maximize the effective overall production time for all the units in the plant so everything is working in a synchronized, uh, very well orchestrated. The important thing here is to document everything that the process engineers or whoever is going to do that, the management can see, they can understand that, they can review that, and then you get the collaboration. Here you don't need to install anything, this is running in the tool. This is the second step. The second step is really to identify the upper and lower control limits and define 
one of the three problems. Here we are having a problem of this edge. We are going to four. Of course, we are calling the grind out, but most importantly, that we are having problems with potential. The guard valve is what we control the interface in the thought generation. As you are going to see from the model. We will be playing around for quite some time that this is the key um, manipulated variable that we have. But if we have a completely clock, we are going to have a terrible rotation. And that's very important to have it running correctly. So let's continue. So when you got these hiccups that you might be detecting from any of the units, you just apply to all of them, what we call that asset production effectiveness. And the overall physical equipment effectiveness is underneath this production, because what we want to do is satisfy customers with the right concentrate and the right recovery for the plant from whatever type of input or low-grade minimum you got. So you need to know when you're losing money and do something to avoid that and these capsules are time and data enable us to uh, classify the data sets that we need to uh, aggregate the data and also to model them. Continue. So now that we've got a good data set within the bounds that uh, we are going to be able to be predicting something correctly, we calculate the size distribution. We start adding the quality side to the whole process. First we look at the production, now we're looking at production and assets. And now we look at form. So now we're looking at the quality zone. We know the size distribution. We can know what is the size distribution that our population needs. So we can use models. We have these models. We can use optimism, for instance, if we want to, and then predict what is the proper size distribution for this type of rotation cells that we have. And we're going to maximize the copy of the power. We can do that. And then we got these measurements. We are doing the online modeling of the climbing. Now we are doing the online modeling. So now we're going to this uh, rotation model. What rotation model are we going to use? What are the operational models that exist in the world? Well, there are very few. And this is one that was uh, uh, you know, developed in 1982 with uh, Professor Perks and then uh, Douglas Christino. And we used some of this idea and we make it work. So now we got the Godin bubble and we can see the standards going on in the top. And we understand what's going on in the clock. We know exactly what this interface is done due to the changes in the part up here, because this model was designed not for uh, design of the location, but really for optimization of the typical bank. So when we start applying those things, and that's what I'm going to discuss, we got here yeah, the key characteristic that goes into the model, the typical hydrodynamics variables that are affecting bubble creation. And uh, froth generation that is done through moving our dart valve here. I'm going to demonstrate that in real. So we can estimate our pump flow rate in real time. We can estimate our tailings in real time by measuring the right variable in every environment. We can even estimate the amount of water going, the amount of water coming down. All those things can be estimated in time. So this is the most important thing, is that we got a model that is uh, phenomenologically based and has three fundamental roles. One is that the air and water has to follow this constraint. This is the constraint. And there we got the bubble to the pulp, and this is the bubble to the trough. And we got what's called chocolate. And that is determined by this little equation here that we developed in the zero with Professor Concha and the University of Concepcion. And then we have been working on it and we have been improving it. Well, that, that's it. It's basically this little, this model we see here. And how you solve it? Well, we are going to see. The other thing is that here we are putting a lot of energy. So it's called the specific energy of rotation, which is called the coordinate of the children. Power with gas and divided by the point value. That gives you that epsilon. That epsilon moves and the factor that does everything in the rotation as you are going to see. Then we apply the population balance model that does the accounting, and we put all these things in together, and this was reported by Maspur and Perk, this is the thesis, the thesis, and we put all the things to work together. So this is the typical model without this uh, attachment detachment, as you know that, it is 
if the impeller is too fast or not the right impeller, or we are going to have another problem. And that's what we get from with the bar bar. When you have those particles, they are all going to end up here because it's well mixed, but it's not mixed. If you've got density particles and large particles, they are not going to be able to be exit in the mechanism of your flotation cell. So you need to choose the right uh, flotation cell and the right turbulence system that is going to maximize your uh, flotation recovery. These two equations are the discretization of the hyperbolic equation that we saw there, and it has been reported over time, and we have been including it over time with all the experimental things that we do in the plant. So the water entrainment is basically the bubble uh, carrying a shell of variable using the levage, which was reported many, many years ago. And then we just calculate this uh, bubble uh, main diameter uh, based upon the epsilon, which is the common of theory. And we did a lot of experiment based upon the calculus and the slope of the Germanian. And we just uh, tune it for uh, using dimensional numbers to be able to be scalable. And these numbers are very, very uh, scalable. And then the correlation of the fold that we follow the same procedure. We did a lot of research with very uh, tight uh, controls. We come out with these equations and we have been able to use them, predict them, and it goes very well in the industrial plants when we do have the measurements, of course. So the drainage is based upon the Raymond equation and some um, old uh, studies done in Switzerland. We just reorganize those and we put them in a simplified form based upon the amount of air that you got there, the, the interface, the volume that you got. Uh, Bubble size, and today the bubble size you can see in that camera. So it's very easy to estimate and to correlate the things in this number is very well correlated. Just you don't even know anything, it really gives you a bit of this visual image, which will give you the same. And the place a little bit of this around that number, uh, as you saw in my original slide. And this is the amount that comes out. This is the linear uh, effect in the Francis equation. This is a pretty well done thing in some many experiments. If you have problems, if you have things like that, of course, in this case, it will change. But the uh, height in the gravity is what's really giving you that pool, and depending on the amount of water or air that you have, you can do water and air, and it will uh, be uh, proportional. It's no more than um, that. And then you get the turbulent aggregate velocity, this is EAP, and Sugar and Bishop Berger has a book on all this stuff. This is fresh new book. He gave me the book when he was talking to me with my, my thesis. He did a tremendous contribution to the values of this equation. Although I had it before because uh, Professor Jim sent it to me from, from Johannesburg and he was there and there was a lot of research that he did there. So it's very curious to be connected to the right people to use the Abraham equation that is very well known for application. And this routine work of key, which is based upon the epsilon from concrete. So continuing, this is what we have done, and we did this, and we put this together with some people from the University of Concepcion in Chile, and we got kind of work model working in an iPad. This was originally done in mainframe, but today the iPads give you the flexibility to show the fog moving back and forth, and you can touch the air, you can touch the power if you want to, the heat here, the reagent in the heat, the tail, you can change some of the parameters of the reach. So when you swipe your finger this way, you get to see the model in this uh, discretized way, or you can look at the other way and you can see the trend and the effect and see how, you know, they take time every time they are moving, because this is a time system, it's a dynamic system. So it's like a game, that's what it is. And then you get to see also, you know, when you get a lot of problems that you want to do, and that's what happens. And if you don't have the right valve, the valve is valve, you can touch it here, you can see, you can roll this foam, and of course here you are going not to have a lot of recovery, because everything is going to be going down the tail. And it's very simple, if you are dividing here one, whatever is hydrophobic, and that hydrophobic is done. And so you have so little hydrophobic, this spring in the tail is very, very large. So that's what you get modeling due to the course materials. Watch that course material very, very carefully. 
So this is basically what it is, and we can put the model and we can do a lot more stuff, I'm not going to go into that. But the most important thing, how we apply that in practice. In practice, we need to know who is running the system and, and how they are working, the communication that they have, starting from the mind, hopefully, and then knowing what type of order you are going to be processing, gather data, cleanse the data, identify the operation in space, as I said, so we can run the model and calculate when we've got some problem, any loss that we got is not really on copper. It's really the energy that you wasted, the water, the balls, all that material that was running at the time, we can do the integration by the capsule, for instance, and we can calculate the cost of that and this is where you start fighting, and this is something that was very well known for Kodya Wasi, which is a Bianco and uh, an American company um, run in Chile in 2015, and they presented, you know, that, that the rotation was to be finer, but the grinding was to be higher. It's going to have more proof. Where do you stay? Where do you stay where you have new cost to the next damage to the whole operation? It's not related to rotation only. This is your water separation, it is your energy consumption, which is this is, is really all the cost that you can see here. I presented uh, many years ago, working with Dr. Free at the ball, which is now people back around, we presented profit grinding concepts and we did this. I mean, Dr. Free was on top of this in um, 1980, 1978 when I met him. And we were able to put this to work in 1984. You read the paper, it's all there. This is not the, the tools are better, we can communicate much better, we can do a lot more calculations if we're running in the cloud, we have the infinity, infinity computing capacity of the cloud. And this is why we start taking the particle size analyzer and we analyze this. It was given to me by the Colorado School of Mine. I did some lectures there and they sent me this information which I was talking about it. So here on the floor, they really thought that this is what we have come up with. In the PA, they might be right. But what happens with the fines and reports? In fact, the whole country, the highest of the dynamics of the grinding, of the dynamics of the cyclone, and the other potential. It's all related to the fines and science distribution. Not only one side, the distribution. So you need to measure the distributions in your time. Yeah, they are. We have done this in many places now, and it's given us a tremendous amount of information to really. Uh, identify what is the right throughput and what is the right because you're going to see the right profile to maximize the uh, cost. So we go next year, this is the foundation cell again, the bar valve are the, the most important manipulated variables and with the air addition depending on the turbulence. Okay. And then we get the right um, profiles, I'll show you that here. This is the way that we characterize the upper and lower control limit for all the variables with the historian according to the type of ores, so you know the, the constraints. The, the system tells you when you do it right. So you don't need to go there. But then you put the models so you are um, within the constraints that you need to be there so the models is fine and you can predict the recording and you can predict your grand part. And then by having this tool, you can run to an optimal uh, recovery of your method. And uh, now we can, this is the table for a typical um, bank, this is using for the tech machines, and we calculate the maximum L dot, and we do some experimentation in practice, and this one, as you can see here, <coughs> that you are bubbles, and you are measuring, and you are looking at them, and you feel yourself, and that becomes part of your data set, that we are calculating, you are losses, you are calculating, you are recovery, and we are identifying what is the best scheme of the whole bank to maximize your, um, your recovery. And I have some other pictures here because sometimes you get one cell that doesn't have anything because, of course, you are putting a lot of uh, coarse material that in turn goes away. And the dark bodies get blocked, so you see a lot of tunes that is not you that we don't know how to run it. Is because the grinding does not do the right thing. And then we go and we can look at the bubble, we can see the cameras, we get information directly into SIP, 
And this is the same Jiva has some signals that we can interpret it, we can manage it according to like you got the noise, but you need to define what is the energy or food. So you start identifying what is the type of bubble that you want according to the frequency that you see here. So the machine will start talking to you in essence when you watch it. And then you can do a lot more things, you know, primitive ideas, but uh, we are getting there very close. And then of course when you get this information, you can have the plan model. You start from the side feet rate, you end up with your recovery and you fine tune basically where are the settings without violating anything, you are just going to contain the constraint, so you are maximizing your throughput, but without violating any of the constraints from A to B. And then we got some people using these ideas, we started from the drilling in this case, from the drilling, uh, blasting, uh, holding, and, and loading your trucks, and all of the things by using this concept of the digital plant template with the upper lower control link and integrating that everything is going correctly. Even they have the geo positioning of the tracks and fixing the roads so you get the velocity of the track going in and the velocity of the track coming back. So you get this sign of the race of tracks to maximize the throughput in the mine and those are the things that are being uh, uh, operational of the uh, and it says it can register the strategy. So we have moved into logistics using this approach. And this is Barry Gold, same thing. We homogenize the feet here, understand exactly what we have. So we do the right grinding. Uh, those curves that we saw are from this liquid. Basically, we are managing the slopes and making sure that we are doing the right grinding. With the particle size distribution in the beginning and at the end of the product to maximize the sterilization, adding the right of propylene having the run on the air to the maximum of the uh, goal we go improvement. So this is by reduction the travel time and understanding the effects of particle size distribution shape. So the digital mineral processing model started first. And then the PA is not the right control environment. So we need to use the particle size distribution and optimal uh, program that we need to define what is the best tonnage to run the unit hydrodynamically correctly. And the operational application model includes these grinding disturbances due to the fine particles and the coarse particles, and it enables that by measuring the right turbulence that you need to have today according to your specific gravity, about your present solids, and you need to have that maximum um, air holdback that you can achieve by doing the right turbulence measurements which is just the power, uh, the right impeller, the right bottles, the right bar valve, and you can really get that thing going and maximizing the, 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 the whatever we call it, we are doing is a, a two-phase flowing machine. And then the dynamic support, because now we are looking at that, we can remotely look at these things and maximize the whole processing and computing. So, when you get this uh, type of tool that transforms the raw data into information, we have a lot of visibility of what's going on. And that enables us to look at this from a completely new dimension and to maximize the uh, overall possibility of the Okay, my name is Octavio Bustur. I work with USP Digital and um, I'm a consultant fellow from SIFTI. Really, how to integrate this component and how to make them work and very well together. Thank you very much for your time and uh, good luck to answer any questions you have.